When the Queensland Ballet advertised for a new artistic director, they simply couldn't believe one of the applications they received. It came from none other than Lee Shwin Sin, the man better known as Mao's last dancer. Lee Shwin Sin defected from China on a dance tour to the United States. He then met, fell in love with an Australian girl and now lives in this country. He's the subject of tonight's Australian story. Let's take a quick look. Don't be afraid. Uh, have a courage. Have that determination then I think nothing is impossible. You will be able to make yourself successful. When you actually have the guts to really trust yourself, to back yourself, uh, then I think you'll be most likely to be successful. Li Xun, Xun Xin, the new artistic director at Queensland Ballet and the man at the centre of tonight's Australian story. He's with us now from Brisbane. Many thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. This is complete full circle for you. Yes, uh, it's uh, the most exciting opportunity in my life so far, I think. Now, I know many people would have seen, uh, the, the, either read the book or seen the film about your extraordinary life as a young child in China, picked from obscurity, went on to dance in America and now live here. I was quite surprised to learn that you'd actually left the ballet and gone off and worked as a stockbroker for so many years. How did that come about? Yes, it was uh, really a, a career transition really to ensure uh, my family's financial security. I was supporting not only my own family of three young children, but also supporting my rather large family back in China, my parents and six brothers. I really want to change their lives. So that was really the reason for me to brief out into a world of unknown. But I have to, I have to say I've, I'm so pleased that I've done that, I've made it successful, be able to make that difference for my family in China as well as make sure my children have a, a good education. And is that something that you still uh, have a responsibility to do? I always felt that responsibility ever since a child. Uh, it was my dream to be able to help to change my family's fate. Uh, in China because the life there was so tough. So it, I finally had the opportunity to be able to help them, which uh, I, uh, I think now they're all doing quite well with the China, all the changes there, uh, the prosperity they have experienced, and with my help have made a big difference. It seems to me, though, that this has always, uh, you know, from the story that we know of you, this is, ballet is your, is your big love. So what a wonderful opportunity to now return. How did you hear about the job? Did you think about it for even a second? No, I thought I would truly moved on uh, once uh, I've been in the stockbroking industry for over 10 years. But when I was approached by the headhunter um, for the job, and I really, my heart fluttered, and I, I knew uh, I always had that passion. That passion never really left me for ballet. So what a wonderful way to be able to come back to contribute uh, to make a difference to the art form that I truly loved. What sort of brief do you have for the Queensland Ballet? Uh, it's very clear and simple to make this company as great as I poss possibly can. And this is my vision to really make Queensland Ballet one of the most dynamic, vibrant and the highest standard ballet companies in the world. Li Xunxun, when you think about your life and you see the young dancers today and, and how completely different it was for you starting as a young boy in China, what lessons do you bring or do you think they're so far apart that it's quite hard for young people to understand you know, the sacrifices that you made to dance? Well, I think there's a lot of similarities uh, there as well. I think it's the passion they have, the dedication, the work ethic these kids still have today, especially in Queensland Ballet. And I truly, I find it very inspiring. I, that's one of the reasons I really uh, are looking forward to work with these dancers, to help them to realize their faraway dreams. The difference is that I think, that I think the dance sophistication, the understanding of this art form is far more advanced than my time back in China. So people like me and some of my other artistic staff, the teachers and the coaches, I can bring, I will bring on board, will really make a difference in the young dancers' lives today. So, do you feel things have moved on even since the ten years that you have been out of out of ballet? 
Well, I never really out of ballet. My heart was always there. I was served on the board of the Australian Ballet for many years, and I, at times I coached and judged ballet scholarship competitions and watched a lot of performances. But be able to have that distance, look at ballet in a in a uh, in a hall, and I think I actually gained a lot of insight, and I really am very clear about how I want to shape and lead uh, this wonderful organization. Did you have much discussion at the family dinner table about uh, going back, leaving stockbroking, which is obviously a, a much more lucrative business than ballet? Oh, it is a really a soul-searching experience, to say the least. And uh, and I, my wife Mary, was uh, you know always in the ballet, and teaching, and coaching at the Australian Ballet for over ten years. So she was always in it, in it, and she had played a major part in convincing me to seriously consider this. And, uh, and I think she's absolutely right that that's obviously what is the passion in my heart always.